I have no doubt I'll put most people to sleep anyway, but if the lights were off, it would just really be bad. Okay. Here's, uh, here's what we're going to get into, and we'll, take, we'll see how the schedule goes. We'll probably take either four or five uh, Sunday mornings to do this. And because I do have some mercy, a couple of weeks in, I'm going to give you a break from it for a week or two and talk about something else just so you can kind of cleanse the palate, as Mike Myers once said, you know, and, uh, and just not totally drive everybody away. Let's take a look at examining faith or belief in God in the light of science and good sense and logical belief. Uh, and here's what we're talking about. This class may or may not be to your liking. I know that. I, I understand that. And I apologize for some of you who just really are not going to like this. But I think you may find it useful. If you will hang with me for a few weeks, I think you're actually going to hear some things that you'll say, you know what, I, that's actually good to know. Um, this is designed for anybody who is very sure that they believe in God but maybe couldn't tell uh, an atheist or a skeptic exactly in a convincing way why you believe in God, if that makes sense. This is also for the person who is pretty sure that they do not believe in God and wishes some of these believers would open their minds up and take a look at, at science and evidence, you know, and get with the program. Or if you're pretty sure you do believe in God and you know you want to, but you got some questions because you're kind of thinking, you know, yeah, I believe I've always believed, but there's some really smart people who are telling me that this stuff's not true. And I, I, I got I don't want to say anything. I don't want to speak up and ask a question, but I, I've got questions. You may find yourself somewhere on that spectrum. And if if you are somewhere and anywhere on the spectrum that I said, or you just like to know why you believe what you believe or don't believe, this is for you. And so if that sounds like you, you'll like this. Uh, even despite how fast we're going to move and everything, there are some people who won't like it. And I can guarantee you, and it's okay if you don't like it, because for any number of reasons. Maybe you just don't like listening to me, and I couldn't blame you for that. I don't like listening to me either. You may not like it for that, but some people will just say, you know what, this, this, you have to think too hard. And thinking makes my head hurt, so I'd rather just not think and let's go watch TV. Um, you won't like this, these classes. Okay, but anyway, I hope that you will find something useful here. And as I said, if you want the long version of these, I can get you those files. Uh, you bring me up, uh, we'll, we can talk and get you a flash drive or something. Um, and, uh, and if it's just horrible, you know, just plug in some earbuds, tune me out, kind of nod now and then, and, you know, uh, I'll, I'll be none the wiser. Um, or at least I'll forgive you for it, that's for sure. Okay, here are some questions that you know everybody faces. Where did we come from? How did we get here? Is there some purpose for our existence, or is it random, or is it just whatever I make it, etc.? So, I mean, everybody has asked that from thousands and thousands of years ago until now. Um, everybody would really love to know confidently the answers to those questions. I read something, a very long uh, documentary piece in, in the, uh, from, originally from BBC recently, and the, you know, the science writer, he's saying, you know, we may be on the verge of being the first people in history to actually know where we came from. Well, I might take some exception with that, but at any rate, it's, it's a question the whole world wants to know. Or you could state these, I mean, these are the same questions, kind of, or you could state it in another way. Do you believe in the existence of God? Well, those questions are intertwined, you know, one way or another, they're kind of the same question. That's what we want to take a look at, uh, however you want to state the question. But as I said a minute ago, here's the real question, why? If you believe in God, why? Why do you believe that? Is it because the Bible tells you so? Is it because your mom and dad tells you so? Uh, is it because I, I can very well remember when I was four years old, my exceptionally beautiful Sunday school teacher, um, I was just mesmerized that she was probably my first crush, I guess. Um, probably actually probably wasn't even my first, but at any rate. And if she said it, I believed it because she was the kindest person ever and she was beautiful. But anyway, no, she was just a great, a great Christian lady. And I believed what she told me. It, is that why I believe in God? Or is it because I like people that I, I have met at church? 
But, you know, I like a lot of other people too, including a whole bunch of atheists that I really like. So why? Why do I believe? Or if you believe that there is no God or you think there's probably not, why do you believe that? Is it because you've heard that a consensus of scientists have, have ruled that there is no God? Is that good enough? I mean, is that a good enough reason? I don't think so. I don't think any of the above are good enough reasons. Uh, so I want us to know why, why you believe. And why would it really matter? Because you might say, well, look, okay, that's fine, you know. It, it's kind of like some people like Tennessee and some people like Bama and Auburn and, you know, and that's fine. And you can have your opinion about which one's the greatest team in the history of ever. And you may be right, but it doesn't matter. It's just all good. Why would it really matter? Well, I think it does matter, though, when you're talking about what we're getting into right here. So here are kind of my goals for, for this discussion. First of all, I want us to kind of determine, even though we're going to have to do it in here in a very rapid, very summarized fashion, but still, you'll be able to get at the high points, I think, determine what is logical to believe. Not what do I want to believe or not, but what is logical to believe about the existence or the myth of God and exactly why I believe what I do. I want to have a firm basis for that belief so that... And, and my belief may have to change. My belief needs to always be open to change if it's changing toward being more and more correct. All right? But I want to know what, whatever belief I do confidently arrive at, I want to be confident. I want to stand on that. I don't want to have to wonder in the back of my mind, maybe I'm believing something that's really not true. Because, man, I, I, that would nag me badly, badly. Uh, and I want to be able to, 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 to know that without doubt or, or embarrassment. I want to be able to, to respond convincingly and confidently, but still very kindly and respectfully to anybody who may challenge whatever I do or don't believe. That's okay. If we're having an honest discussion, I don't even mind having difficult discussions. That's fine. Uh, but, and I want to be able to learn something. And if you can show me that, that what I believe needs better understanding, I'm all ears. I want to know that, okay? But I want to be able to do the same too. And finally, if I decide confidently what I have reason to know is the truth, I want to be able then to share that with other people. And, by the way, to know, because everybody's different. Everybody likes different things. Everybody's brain works in a slightly different way. And the same approach is not the same for everybody. Um, so that's kind of my goals for that. Well, here's some principles to go with that. And I know I'm just kind of laying groundwork, but we're going we're gonna to lay down a lot of important things today that are going to help us for, for the rest of this discussion. So here's my principles. Ask anything. I mean anything. I know there are some people who say, well, you shouldn't even be asking that. Yeah, you should. Whatever it is. Yeah, you should. And say, like, well, you shouldn't, you, know, you shouldn't even question the existence of God. Yeah, you should. Because if he's not real, I want to know that. And if he is real, I want to know that too. Or anything else too. You should question everything. But for a lot of people, they say they're questioning everything, but what they're really doing is looking for a good excuse to do or not do whatever they want. So if you're going to question everything, then you have to also be willing to follow where the evidence leads you, even if that's not where you really wanted to wind up. That makes sense? You've got to be honest. And what I'm going to say in this, uh, here's a cheesy acronym, and I was just so pleased with myself when I thought of this, okay? You've got to be honest, especially on this question, you've got to be honest with yourself. Science, evidence, logic, facts. Are you willing to be honest with those things wherever they may lead you? Whether it's where you already tended to believe or not, and whether it's what you wanted to believe, you get it. Okay. Since you got a brain, use it. You could say either that, that God gave you a brain or that evolution gave you a brain. I don't know, whatever. That's what we, we hope to figure out. But you got one. You're smart people. Use your brain. Okay, and I know it's so easy to not use it because it hurts to think, doesn't it? But sorry, guys. Uh, and I know some of you, you love to think. The harder the problem, the better you like it. Okay, uh, 
So, but wherever, wherever you are on that spectrum, let's engage with this. Don't let anybody do your thinking for you because this is way too important. And follow the intellectual honesty that you want other people to follow. You can't just embrace an idea because you want to and expect somebody else to do that. You can't discard an idea just because you don't like it. What if it's true and you need to know it? Okay, there's a lot of things that are very unpleasant or not what you want it, but you need to know them. If the house is on fire, yeah, nobody wants to hear that, but you probably need to know it. All right? So, you want other people to be open to, to see and to learn and to perhaps even change their position. So, you and I have to do the same thing. All right, and finally, no matter how you approach something, no matter how solid you, you may, uh, you know, show something, disprove it, whatever, there will still always be disagreement. Always. But that's no reason, even if somebody does not agree with me, that is no reason that I should have less respect or kindness uh, or affection for them. It, okay, if I'm really who I'm trying to be, my affection and my willingness to do anything for anybody ought to be the same even if they absolutely disagree with what I believe. All right, so those are some of my principles. Well, if there really is a, okay, a superior entity, and you can, you can use in English, we call him God. Um, he's Dios if you're speaking Spanish, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But if there really is a superior entity who created us, or an intelligent designer, whatever, however you want to say it, well, why doesn't he just display himself? And by the way, as I noted on there, and all kidding aside, I say he and him I, because we have no better terms. Okay, so I'm just I'm going to use the, the terms that the, the, the way he presents himself, uh, at least in the pages of the Bible. Uh, and by the way, here's a side note. This is going to be a very different study for me, not only because of the rate we're going to move at, etc., but because this is the one and only time that you're going to see me teaching a Bible class and not using the Bible. Yeah, okay, how weird is that? Uh, that's not my usual style. If you know me very well, it's like I want to I want to research. I want to know what the Bible says about anything, but not on this topic. Not necessarily. Now we will refer to the Bible absolutely, but not very much. And it won't be the proof that I use for anything. You can probably already figure out why, but we'll we'll come back to that in a minute. But that is the the way that we find this superior entity described. So I will say he, him, etc. Et well, why doesn't he just display himself? You know, you want to say, okay, you know, if there really is a God, how about he just pops in front of me right now? He doesn't even have to give me anything. He doesn't even have to grant my wish. Although that would be nice. Uh, okay, but why doesn't he just right here and now? And that would just put an end to the question, wouldn't it? No, it wouldn't. And in fact, if you believe the Bible, which we are not using for our evidence at the moment, there are hundreds of eyewitness testimony accounts, witness testimony like you would have in a courtroom, who say that they did encounter him in person or uh, with hundreds of witnesses. But still, it still wouldn't actually end the argument. You can uh, take a look at, at uh, Abraham and the rich man in Luke 16, uh, where he just kind of gives a reminder, most people are going to believe what they want to believe. Um, Etc. I guarantee, uh, I've heard Bill Watkins make this, this uh, illustration very nicely. I, I mean, a God could manifest himself right here, right now in front of you. And, and I guarantee you by day after tomorrow, everybody in the world will saying, yes, this is a, a case of mass hallucination that took place in Nashville, Tennessee. Okay. But, and, but you know, th these questions here are really just, I'm, I'm going to reference some scripture here uh, because he may just choose not to. Uh, you remember certain stories where he wasn't in the mighty wind and he wasn't in the earthquake. He was in the still small voice and you had to be listening carefully to hear it. Romans 1 would tell us that the evidence for him is everywhere, and it's overwhelming, and it's unmistakable. That's what, what uh, Paul would say in Romans 1, if we were depending on that for evidence. But people are determined not to see it, will not see it. Um, 
And I would say perhaps just like the parables, when you, you see Jesus say, hey, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. Have you ever thought, I mean, that's kind of one of those throwaway statements. We skip over it. Have you ever thought about what that means? It's like, hey, if you're, if you're actually looking for information, listen up because I just gave it to you. Okay, if you're really looking for truth, open your ears, here it is. But most people didn't want to hear that, did they? Okay, so I know there were some scriptural references there, but there may be a lot of reasons that he doesn't just pop here. And he may just say, I don't do party tricks. I want to see who's actually looking, listening, and thinking. Uh, because the evidence may be there. Well, let's see if it is or not. Well, let's just, while we're on kind of these very important foundational things, because I know a lot of people, again, would say, you don't need to be questioning this. You need to accept the existence of God on faith. But I think that would be a hard thing to say to somebody who says, okay, yeah, great, that was nice. I believe in science. If you can't tell me why I should believe in you just tell me I ought to believe in him because I ought to, uh, thanks. You know, that, that's not going to work for a lot of folks. You see what I mean? Well, let's talk about what is faith. Because here I think a lot of, of Christian believers have a um, genuinely mistaken concept of faith. Here's what I mean. Is faith just believing something that you've been told? Like I said a while ago, my parents told me, my Sunday school teacher told me, my, you know, my preacher told me, etc. Should I just believe that? What if they're lying? Or, I mean, or more, uh, more uh, possibly, what if they are sincerely, genuinely mistaken themselves? All right, and here I'm believing and I'm staking everything on that. To me, that's not faith. That's being silly. Yeah, I had somebody call me the other day. In fact, I think there were about 10 of them who was going to get me a better deal on an extended warranty on my car, too, and lower my credit card rates, even though there's nothing wrong with your current accounts. There's no problem, but it's imperative that you call me. Yeah, do you believe what you're told? I pity you if you do, but I think you're smarter than that. Some people, though, they believe in God because it gives them some kind of peace, okay? And if that belief is real, it should bring you peace, and it will if it's real. But just the fact that I would like to have a sense of peace in my life is not a reason to believe. What about believing something for which there is no proof? And that's what a lot of people would say that believing in God is, that it maybe doesn't make sense. Uh, but, you know, to me, is that faith? It's like, hey, I've got enough faith. I believe things that don't really stack up to the evidence. I'm not sure that makes me real smart. Um, leading to this, something that has no rational basis. Uh, believing in something with no rational basis, you can call that faith if you want, but to me that doesn't say much. Here's what I would say faith is. Believing in something that you have not yet seen based on rock-solid, evidence-based trust in the reliability of the source. Okay? Let me give you an illustration. If I tell you, um, I say, Isaac... If you walk up here, not, not at the moment, I'm not offering this, illustration only, disclaimer. If I say, Isaac, if you walk up here and you tap my fist twice, I'm going to open it and there's going to be a $20 bill in it and I'm going to give it to you. Okay? Now, Isaac probably knows me and he's probably saying, Steve doesn't even have $20, okay? Much less is he going to give it to me. It's not worth my effort to get out of my seat and walk up there and do it. Okay? He's a smart man. Okay. So he might, he might very well have good reason to not have faith in what I just told him. All right? But suppose this, and if you know me even less than Isaac does, then you really are not going to use the energy to walk up here. But suppose this. What if I say that, uh, and so I make that offer to Garrett, and he says, why not? You know, I'll walk up there and, you know, why not? Taps me twice, I open it, 20 bucks. He scores. Okay? And then I say, Carissa, same thing. You walk up here, do this, $20. And she does. And yes, I give her $20. And Greg does that. And 20 people in a row. And then I come to Kurt. Same offer, Kurt. Now, Kurt might actually walk over here, do you think? Kurt might have some faith. Why? Because he has now seen evidence of the reliability of the source. 
uh, that, that, that wasn't there uh, before. So he might actually want to do that. And it might make sense to have faith at that point. Tim. And, and what you're talking about, too, here, all of this takes into account that you have to do something. And your, your premise here is that so many Christians, so many people outside of the church or whatever, base their faith on something that they've not done any research, not done any uh, of their own investigation on. And I think for these points here, your faith should be based on something that you have put some kind of action toward, and that should yeah. be your responsibility if you're going to have faith in anything. Medicine, Christianity, whatever. whatever. Okay. Beautiful point. For the sake of any who may not have heard him and for the recording, what Tim said kind of in a nutshell is, this is going to take some effort on your part. Okay, faith is not without effort. Whatever it is, whether the field is medicine or uh, I, whatever, science, finance, whatever it is, if you want to know something about it, you're going to have to invest some effort. You're going to have to dig a little bit to, to actually build a basis for believing or not believing, whatever the premise may be. So, you know, whether you want to believe that there is no God or believe that there is, you got to be ready to invest. You've got to, you got to be willing to dig a little. And, and I just agree so completely. Uh, so thank you, you Tim. And, and I may not have given a real great summary of that. But, but yeah, uh, you know, don't expect... If, if somebody hands you what you're going to believe... Why in the world are you going to have confidence if you didn't dig for it yourself? All right. Well, so I would say actually to, to wrap up our little faith discussion here and then move on with that. And I'm going to propose to you that there are two levels of faith. One is believing something that you've not yet seen, like we just defined, but based on a solid rational trust in the reliability of whoever's telling you this that you should believe. Okay? And to me, that's what Hebrews 11 is. Some people call it the, the chapter of faith. Well, that's true. I tend to call Hebrews 11 the chapter of rock-solid evidence. I mean, you read it, that's what you're looking at, is these people believed because we have because look at all that's gone before look at all you have seen about the reliability of this source that's why it's the substance of things not yet seen okay the evidence it's not the hope it's not the wish it's the substance he, what he's telling you is it's real it's as real as if you had already seen it because of all this evidence that went before so there's that okay but another level of faith, actually believing in and acting on promises and commandments in the Bible, which call for action, definite action, okay, based on thousands of years' worth of evidence and demonstration of who God is. So the more fundamental faith in the very existence of God is exactly what we've said. It's got to be, or it ought to be based on rock-solid evidence and a rational basis. Science and evidence and logic and facts. That's what we're going to get into. And here's why, okay, you've, you've heard me mention almost all of the scripture that I'm going to mention in these weeks. And here's why. Circular reasoning is no good. Either on the atheistic side of things or on the God-believing side of things. Because if I say, yes, I believe in God because the Bible tells me so. And how do I know that I can believe the Bible? Because it came from God. Yeah, kind of chasing your tail there, round and round. Okay, the classic illustration is, uh, my mom, you may not know this, my mom is the Queen of England. Mm -hmm. How do I know that? She told me. Well, how do I know that she's telling me the truth? She wouldn't lie, because after all, she's the Queen of England. Round and round we go. I believe what I believe because I said that I believe it, and I said I believe it because I believe it because... Okay, no good. So you're actually not going to see me using the Bible except in passing references to prove the existence of God. Now, if we decide that there is a God, then that becomes the next question, actually. Well, why not just believe? Okay, well, at this point, I think we've almost covered it. I'm just going to go through this. You know... 
I would tell you that the very deep emotional connection of faith, I mean the passion that comes from real faith that gives us eternal hope and that will change the way I live my life, that ought to be built on absolute confidence that there actually is a God and more than that, that the Bible is actually an authoritative communication. When faith is built on emotion or wishful thinking or something nice to believe that makes me feel good, etc., to me that's like a house built on sand. It's a place to start when you're four years old, but it's not a place to still be standing for the reason for my belief as an adult. Um, and I told you when several weeks ago, I'm about 402 years old now, so you know I, I got to have a reason for what I believe. When tough challenges come, that's not good enough. Well, I want to give you something better. So is your faith built on emotion? If it is, how could you ask somebody else to believe? You know, you ought to believe this because I'm passionate about it. I don't have any rational basis for believing. I couldn't tell you why I think it's true, but you ought to believe it because I, I think it's great. I'll pass if that's the best we got. Okay, so enough of that. In light of those principles then, let's pose some questions that everybody needs to answer. Now, what I'm about to tell you, you're going to look at it on the screen and say, well, that's very obvious. And it will be if you've ever thought about it, but you may not have. So here comes Mr. Nerd here. I, I've warned you, and you know I, I'm an absolute nerd to the nth degree. Here comes some nerdiness, though, but I think it's important if we're going to you know, do things rationally. Is there a superior entity? Call, call him whatever you want. Does it really make sense to believe that? And if so, do we have any reliable communication? And that would be a second discussion later on if we decide that the first answer is yes. Okay, because if there is no God, then I can guarantee you the Bible is a fraud. Okay, there's no point even discussing whether the Bible's real unless I can know very confidently, very logically and rationally that there is a God. So, here's my nerd chart I put together. Flow chart, all right? Programmers, system developers, whatever, scientists of all stripes, you'll probably like this. The rest of you, I'm sure you're already just sitting there glassy-eyed saying, who is this and how do I make it stop? Is there any good way I could grab two slices of cake and, and muffins and head out the door? And you can, yes, that will not be a problem. Okay. Is there a God? Okay, and I don't care if you're atheist, whatever. I, that, that's fine. I'm not assuming anything, but there's an important question for every human being. Is there a God? That's what we want to get into here. All right? Uh, and so here's what I would tell you. I, I don't know if you can see my little arrows here on my flow chart or whatever. If the answer to that is no, well, then you're into all the various branches of what's called existentialism, et cetera, used the proper way, not the way it's used politically. But anyway, it's kind of like you're just here. It's random. That's, there's no purpose. There's no creator. You're just here. That's all there is. Make something of it if you want to. Okay? And there are various branches of that as to what you should make of it. So here's mine. I would say if there is no God, just you know, be a decent human. Do what seems right to you. I mean, there's no objective standard, but just do whatever society has agreed upon that is, is you know, right. Uh, just be decent. You, you'll, you'll have a happier life if you try to be a nice human. But you don't have to do anything because there's no God. There's, I mean, it's just you got here randomly. So, but just do that, okay? On the other hand, if the answer is yes, okay, now it becomes important for me to ask, has he communicated with humans? All right? I, I think that's logical, isn't it? whether you believe this or not. If the answer is no, well, then I steer you back to this. Then just, okay. Because some people think, yeah, there's a God, but He has no relevance to your life. He is completely uninvolved in your life. He just threw things out there, and then He just lets it. He just stood back and said, all right, I'll see where it goes. Well, if that's the case, again, well, you, then you don't have any guidance or purpose. Just do what seems right to you. Okay. If the answer is yes, well, the Bible is the primary book that claims to be from God, so it would then make sense to ask, okay, well, is the Bible actually valid or not? If the answer is yes, then I would say you need to follow it gladly, precisely, reverently, with all of your heart. If the answer is no, well, then is there another source that I should be looking at? I mean, is there some other communication instead of the Bible? If the answer is no, just 
be a decent person. Okay. If the answer is yes, then I need to figure that out and follow it. And there are some people who will tell me that the Bible is either not the source or not the primary most important source. So I need to look at those if I, decide, if I get that far. All right. Is that nerdy enough? Yeah, I know the answer to that. But does it make sense? Okay, from a nerd perspective? All right. However, and I'm going to beg you, um, there is too often people can't look at that and say, yeah, let's look at this rationally. And let's still like each other and respect each other while we're on this quest for knowledge and this journey. And even if we arrive at different conclusions at the end, could we still be friends? You know, could we still respect each other and be decent to each other? I beg you for the answer to be yes. Okay, because there's no reason for it to be anything other. And I don't care what side you're on. In the last few decades in particular, there has come around come about kind of a new breed of atheism that says it's not enough to say, yeah, those Christians, they're nice folks, they're sadly mistaken, but, you know, that's, that, that's okay. That's no longer good enough. It's now they are stupid and we need to absolutely destroy them. That's the way a lot of things are going in society, unfortunately. If I disagree with you, you must be destroyed, you know, whatever the topic uh, but it can go the other way too because there are too many believers who will say, man, those atheists, that is a rotten bunch of people. You know, they don't believe, they're rotten, uh, you know, and I may even pronounce certain judgments on their eternal future, etc. No. Okay, how about instead of, hey, those are some decent people. Let's see if we can learn something together, but even if not, let's be truly respectful of each other, decent, okay? So I, I would beg, uh, you know, that on either side. I will say this, because of what's happening with some of these people who are just saying, you're not just mistaken, you're stupid and you have no place in society, it can sometimes seem like a war these days, if you're a believer. Um, but I beg you this, if you are a believer in God, it can seem like war, but don't let your weapons be nastiness. Let them be faith and solid information and confident knowledge, which I hope we're going to build. Let your tactics not be like, what can I do to the other guy? How can I make him look stupid? How can I tell him, you know, uh, that he's a horrible person? No, how about let my tactics be thorough preparation and respect and kindness and genuine concern, like I actually cared about somebody? Um, let my strategic goal not be crushing the person who doesn't share my belief. But if I truly believe that there's a God, let my goal be crushing my real adversary. And it's not the guy sitting next to me who's telling me I, I don't believe in God or I'm not sure I do. My real adversary is someone who I have not yet seen in the flesh, but I've seen his horrible work. That's my real adversary. So let me battle by advancing truth and rescuing victims, not criticizing or attacking them. Does that make sense? And there ought to be no, if you've heard the term ad hominem, that means I criticize you not, I don't, it's not that I disagree with your argument, it's just, you know, you're ugly and your mother dresses you funny. It's, okay, you know what I'm talking about? It's, it's, it's to have an argument, an argument I mean in the best sense of the word, the true sense, which is an exchange of ideas to try to advance, you know, knowledge. That's what a true argument is supposed to be. But instead, it's just like, la, 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 la. You know, I don't like what you say, and I, have, I, have no, I, I don't have anything to counter it. So you're ugly, and your mother dresses you funny, and you're stupid, because I don't really have an argument to, to counter what you just told me. There's too much of that on both sides. Um, and it, it has no place. That doesn't help anybody or anything. All right, so we're, there, there are our uh, uh, questions. So what we're going to try to do is establish a solid answer to the first one of these questions. Is there a creator? All right. You suffered through all of that. But I hope it made sense. And it was very necessary. All right, so here's what I would tell you. If we want to talk about... How did we get here? Where did we come from? Is there a creator, etc.? I would say, in my nerd way of thinking, there are four major questions or phenomena that have to be explained 
either with a creator or without one. So this, I mean, there's, you could think of this a lot of different ways, but to me, this is the most logical way I can think of to actually take it a piece at a time and figure out the truth. The first one is the existence of all the matter and energy in the universe. There's a lot of it. The second is the very precise structure and organization of the universe and this planet, etc. Because you know, on the, like the original Star Trek, well, and probably every other one too, everywhere they went, there were planets with breathable oxygen atmosphere and plants and, uh, you know, people who looked strangely human, etc. And very beautiful women and, uh, you know, who Captain Kirk could, you know, pair up with and stuff. Wow, how, how convenient. In reality, something very, very different in, in the universe. But it's very precisely structured and arranged, and there has to be an explanation for that, either with a creator or without one. The third, the initial appearance of any kind of life on this planet, any kind of life whatsoever. And fourth, the diversity and complexity and precision of the life that you're looking at on this planet. Humans, this incredible machine that we live in, it's a messy machine, but it's an incredible one. Okay, and we're just one thing. I mean, look at plants which are busy producing the oxygen that you need and the fuel that you need, et cetera. Uh, okay, it's, it's amazing, and you know that. So to me, in a nerd perspective, those are the four questions that we have to answer. So I hope that makes sense. All right. And our goal will be to examine the competing theories for each one of these four questions. And that really, when we stack it up and keep a scorecard maybe, it ought to be able to lead us to a very confident belief, where did we come from, how do we get here, is there a creator? Or not. And that tells me then where I need to go with the rest of it. So I want to see what makes the most logical sense to believe. Now, no quiz here. Don't. Don't have to write it all down. By the way, if anybody wants, I'll very gladly give you notes or you know slides from this or in addition to video files, whatever. So don't feel like, oh, I've got to get this down. And also, please don't think, oh, no, I'm done. I'm not listening anymore. Please don't do that either. All right. So down the, the left side, though, here's our four major questions that we just laid out. So what I'm going to give you, at least on a quick tour for each one, is the various competing theories for that. On here, you've got an intelligent design creation theory, and that one's pretty simple. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, etc. All right. Well, we'll get into that in more detail. And I'll put here, there are some alternative theistic mechanisms other than the create, then he's, but these I'm not going to give any serious attention to because they're more like the great god of the cosmos, etc., ate a big meal and he burped and out came the earth. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on those, but they're out there if you want to amuse yourself and they often have really nice illustrations with them, like, you know, here was the earth, etc. Um, now, I've done a kind of a double line there then, because on the right half then are the primary atheistic theories. How things may have happened if there is no God, no creator. So at any rate, that's, that's kind of in a nutshell, you know, what all we're, we're, we're going to wind up looking at. So here's what we have to do next, though. How do you determine what's true? Now this becomes... And this is another one of those things, if you can suffer through this, okay, then we start actually getting a little bit more interesting. And I apologize, because I know right now it's, it's a lot of you are thinking, yeah, what, what's, what other classes are there for next week? I don't blame you. I don't blame you. But I hope you'll stick with me just, just for a little bit till we can get to the more interesting stuff. Because this, unfortunately, it's very, very necessary. So let's kind of get a start on this. How do you determine what's true? Because this is what it all comes down to. All right. Here's the conclusion you know, on this question of, of where did we come from. There are going to be a number of things, no matter what you believe, etc. There are going to be a number of things that you can never fully prove or disprove by human examination. And that's just unfortunately true, no matter where you stand. That's just, you know, there are some things you can't prove. Now, that doesn't mean you have to believe things that don't make sense, 
there is evidence and logic. It just may not be, you know, oh, here it is. It's, you know, all in one neat little kit right in front of you. That's true no matter what. The creation account is one of those things. You weren't there. I wasn't there. I can't tell you, yep, no, I was there. I saw it. That, that's not true. Yep, because I was there. Nope. Um, the creation account is one of them. And any number of competing atheistic theories are some of them too. But that doesn't mean that we're lacking evidence, as I said, because what we can do and what we have to do is consider all the possibilities very critically, see which ones can be disproven and just plain don't make any sense, throw those out no matter where they are, no matter whether that steps on my toes or not, and then figure out with what's left what makes the most sense, what is the most compatible with the available evidence. Now that shouldn't be controversial. That may be kind of nerdy, but it shouldn't be controversial. And that's true even if I tell you, hey, I've got something that can shorten the symptoms of the common cold and turn it into a five-hour deal instead of a week. Okay, then you ought to be all ears, I would think. Yeah, I want to hear about it, but I don't necessarily believe it till you know, you show me that it makes sense. That's what you would do with anything. So a valid method for figuring out what's true is really, really important. And I can't overemphasize this, because if you don't have a good filter, uh, and, and some, you, you could throw in some other acronyms there, a filter for detecting things that may not be true. That'll be my very nice way to say it. Okay. Um, if you don't have a good filter and a good method for figuring out what's true or not, then you're in trouble in every part of life. You're in real trouble if you don't have a really good way of figuring out truth or not. So, let's talk about science. Let's talk about, because what you'll often hear is, oh, you know, we have the science, you know. You have this myth, but we have the science. So, let's talk about science. Um, I think the bell tells me that I have to quit. So I will in just a minute. So in another 25 minutes, I'm going to quit. Okay, no. Let me just introduce this to you so we can pick it up next week. And by the way, you have been so kind to indulge me and put up with me through this discussion. But I hope you can see that it's actually going somewhere. Because it is. Okay, and it's, believe it or not, it's really important. So the scientific method you hear about a lot. We follow the scientific method. I love the scientific method. I love it. I love science. I hope you do too. I mean, you may not want to spend a lot of time studying it, but I, I mean, yeah, I love it. So if you tell me I want to look at the science, man, I'm with you. No matter what the topic, I want to know what's true. And in some cases, we can do that. And the scientific method, or direct testing, that is experimenting and finding out whether something stacks up or not, that's the gold standard. And we ought to use it any time we possibly can. If you tell me on one hand, I want you to just believe something, or I could run an experiment and figure out whether it's true or not, uh, I'll take the experiment. I want to see. i got a brain. It's not a very good one a lot of days, but i got one. I want to use it. So, let's pick up there next week and see where we can go with this. There, again, I know this is a very different style, that it's not a conversational back and forth because of how much we've got to cover, and I'm really going to try hard to, I mean, strip it down and cram it in. So let me emphasize again, if you want to punish yourself with the 16-hour version of this, I'll give you those files. But I don't think you want to do that. If you do, fine. And I say again, because I really, really mean it. If you want to say, hey, look, tell me about this, or, you know, hey, you said this, back that up, prove it, okay? Please come tell me. Uh, I'll make time, and I will love it. Uh, because this, to me, there's just nothing more important than, than what we're talking about here. I'm sorry for what I've done to you today. Please come back next week and be like, say, thank you, sir. May I have another? Uh, please, uh, Kate's got lemon poppy, uh, or poppy seed muffins and cinnamon muffins. Uh, there's chocolate pudding cake. There's snacks. Don't leave hungry, okay? And don't leave. If you see somebody you haven't seen before, don't leave without making some new friends. Thanks, guys. I hope you have a great week ahead.